commitments. Today, I've got another flashlight video for you. I'm gonna turn the hot water on here to let the water start to heat up and get hot. What I have here is a fridge that's leaking and dripping. And it's leaking from right here at the center, showing up on the floor here, which is telling me that we have a freezer condensate drip. What we've got up here is our ice cube tray. Just gonna pull this over to pull it. That'll give us access here. Now we wanna remove the screws that hold the bottom tray in here. It's got four screws. And the longer screws are in the front here. So as long as you remember that, the longer screws are up front here, you'll be all right. We've got a total of four screws that hold it in, two on the bottom tray. And then back here, we've got two holding the freezer channel in place. You can hear the fridge is off right now. It may kick on at any second, depending on the cycle, especially as I've got the door open here. You can unplug this if you want to, if you feel more comfortable with it. I'm just going to be getting it done, kind of like having the air conditioning while I, while I work here. And we'll lift this part up and pull it forward. There's a piece of styrofoam back there. We want to be careful for that. And now we've got our tray right here. And the tray, we can lift up. I may need to get my flat blade screwdriver. Six and one works great for this. Pull it out. We should see a whole bunch of ice underneath, which we do. This stuff is totally frozen. So we're gonna need to chip all this ice out. And I've got actually a bigger screwdriver head to make this easier. Uh, if you have any aluminum pins or anything like that, you can put them on. I'm a lot more careful than I need to be here. The unit's plastic all the way, so you might need to. Back on this side, our water is nice and hot. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off until we need it. I'll show you in a minute what we do there. With all this ice here, I'm going to be taking it and throwing it in the I can use it to clear the grinding ring on the garbage disposer uh, after I'm done. Um, it actually clears all the food debris in the disposer and make it run a bit smoother. That's another story. Check my garbage disposer video for that. I called it how to sharpen the blades, but technically the garbage disposer doesn't have any blades. It has a grinding ring, but it still gets the idea that uh, makes your garbage disposer work better. Okay, right here you can see actually the dis the uh, styrofoam is broken off right there, but that's okay. It'll still, as long as it performs its function, we'll be able to put this back. It'll direct the air. It's not a big deal. And our freezer just kicked on. Also okay, not a big deal. Now I've got pretty much all the ice chipped out. It's just a matter of emptying it. So what was happening is the water from the freezer, the air conditioner removes moisture from the air. And the moisture is the heat. And the way the refrigerator works is a little backwards from how we think. The refrigerator actually removes, removes heat from inside the box. Technically, it does not bring cold in, it brings hot out. Now it's a little backwards from how we might think of it, but that's the uh, science behind it. Refrigerant is a little bit different. It has a different boiling temperature than most items. It actually boils sometimes in the negative degrees is when it boils and turns into a gas. 
And when it changes phase, it's able to absorb quite a bit of heat. And so by having a metering device that meters the refrigerant in at a certain rate or only lets it, restricts the flow, we can change the points at which the refrigerant will change its state. By doing that, we can absorb heat, which happens here at the evaporator coil, and then bring the refrigerant to the condenser coil, and we can remove heat. So by doing that, we can remove heat from the refrigerator. And it's the exact same for an air conditioner. So if you understand refrigeration, you have a good understanding, a good start at understanding air conditioning and vice versa. Okay, our clog is actually right here at this drain port. And as I told you before, let me show you what we're gonna do here with the water. What I have is a water bottle. And what we're gonna do is poke a hole in the top of this water bottle. And this really works easier if you poke a decent sized hole. So I'm actually gonna poke my screwdriver right through, twist it around to make a nice good sized hole. And I'll tell you the truth, this actually works better if you do it this way through the back. That way you'll get more of a straight stream and you can see how it's beveled up towards the top. Now we're going to take our hot water, turn our water on, and it's good hot. You can see it's steaming. Uh -huh. Nice uh, flashlight video. We'll fill up our water and we're going to squirt the stream right down the condensation drain line. Now the tricky part of this, and, well, it's not exactly tricky, but the part where most people get stuck with this, see I'm aiming it right at the hole, is that they give up. And it's not that they give up, but they stop too soon. They might see a little bit of water go down, and then they stop putting water in. You want to make sure that it drains, and then after it drains, you want to do it again to make sure that it really drains, because it's did it drain? Or did it really, really drain? So sometimes you can kind of get it and you think you got it and you didn't get it. So this is something that you may have to repeat. And also this is something that is kind of a regular maintenance item on certain fridges, especially depending on how the freezer is stocked. You can minimize this by food items and everything so that you have good circulation through the freezer. But some fridges, just, it's just a fact of life. Anyway, if you get too much water in there, what you can do is vacuum this out with a wet-dry vacuum. I have my wet-dry vacuum. Hey, look at there. There it goes. But I may not even need it. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes this takes a lot of rounds of, of putting the, the wet-dry vacuum and uh, vacuuming it out, putting it in, vacuuming it out. But it takes what it takes to get it going. It's really not that difficult. Anyway, now that it's cleared, as I told you earlier, I'm gonna add another round of hot water and really make sure. And I'm just aiming that puppy in there, spurting it down. And now we're gonna be for sure, for sure. Ooh, look, it stopped. See, that's what I was telling you about. You really want to make sure, for sure, for sure. There it goes. Now this drains into a small pan that's on the top of the compressor underneath the refrigerator. And the compressor gets hot as it, as it performs its function of pumping the refrigerant through the tubing. And that heat of the compressor helps aid in the evaporation process of getting rid of the, the condensate water that forms on the top of the compressor. So that's the story there. Anyway, now I'm gonna rinse off my styrofoam. Now if your styrofoam 
broke worse than this, the worst spots, you may want to tape it together with some foil tape. Uh, mine is a nice clean break right here. Not a big deal. I could put a little super glue on there and, and super glue it down. But there's really no need as long as it's able to perform its function. This one is, is definitely going to be able to as it's held in place by the back freezer panel. With the rest of this stuff, we can get the rest of this with a wet dry vacuum. It's uh, not as important as you can see stuff in the end or a rag. Easy enough. I actually really lucked out on this one. Uh, I won't need to use the wet dry vacuum. But I'll take the opportunity to kind of clean things up here under the freezer pan. This is like an often missed spot for me. Definitely take some food abuse up in here. Okay, clean that all out. And we're ready to put our pan back. pan has these two little anchors, one on each side at the back. You just got to kind of tilt them underneath the back deal, like I did here. Slip it up and you're able to add your screws. And again, the longer of your screws go in the front That's for this particular model. Now your, your model may be different, so you're going to have to pay attention and modify this tip a little bit to your particular refrigerator, but you get the general idea. Uh, don't force anything here. Everything should go nice and easy. If it doesn't, something's in the wrong position, and you want to make sure you're not putting a screw in where a screw is not supposed to go, because that's no fun. Okay. Now we can add our screws at the back. See how this just kind of slipped in and it's got these little anchor feet that anchor down into the into the slots there and then it slips down into place. Again the same thing, just turn lightly here. Don't want to get anything cross-threaded and don't want to start any new holes. Just want everything to go nice and smooth where it's supposed to go. Now up here we're going to add our Okay. This one just tilt it in, tilt it up, push these in, and anchor them into place. Nice and simple. And now our fridge is all cleaned out. This I'll just vacuum out. See the last few drips making their way through there. Bloop. All right, dropping down here. Anyway, just gonna vacuum this out. That's kind of the final, final, final. I'll give you the view here. You want to make sure you use a wet dry vacuum for something like this. You can't just use any vacuum. It has to be a wet dry vacuum or you're going to electrocute yourself and it ain't going to be fun. <laughs> now our fridge is all set, freezer is all set. We are back in business. Good to go. Nice and easy. Thanks for watching. Kung Fu Maintenance Flashlight Video.